Hello everybody, I am Rachel Skinner. Um, I am the current president of the Institution of Civil Engineers. That's the qualifying body for chartered civil engineers headquartered in the UK, but with more than 95,000 members all across the world. So I'm a fellow of the Institution of Civil Engineers, the ICE. I'm also an honorary fellow of the Society for the Environment. I am a chartered civil engineer and also a chartered transport planner. My day job um, beyond all of that is that I am an executive director at a company called WSP based in London in the UK. I'm also um, a patron of a not-for-profit organisation that I helped to set up about 15 years ago called Women in Transport, which, as you can guess, is all about improving the, the mix of people and particularly bringing women into and keeping them in the transport industry. In terms of my story and kind of what brings me to where I am now, I, I fell into civil engineering completely by accident. I'd studied for a geography degree, but I really didn't know uh, what exact career path I actually wanted to follow once I'd finished that. But I found a graduate role within a transport planning team and I found straight away that I absolutely loved the chance to solve problems and to think creatively and to work in a team to get real visible things done. I love the idea that I was, even at a very, very early stage of my, community, of my career, able to make real change that actually benefited people on the ground. The, the, the applied nature of what I was doing really made a difference to me. So, as I say, I worked as a transport planner. I started out as a graduate and I moved up through the team over about 20 or so years, ending up leading a team of more than 600 people in their delivery of all sorts of projects all across the UK. So I've always been keen to push the boundaries, I'm always keen to explore new ideas, so my particular areas of interest are to do with the future of mobility and transport and some of the technological changes that are coming through to do with electrification, to do with better connectivity of vehicles, to do with automation of vehicles, but also changes in the way that we could own vehicles that are out there for the future and, and really changing the models there. I'm also really passionate around climate action and the importance of civil engineers in terms of taking meaningful action to really cut into our carbon emissions, bring them right down as far as possible, but also to defend our communities against the effects of climate change that lie ahead. I'm really keen on anything to do with improving ways we might we make places and improve places for the future, and generally in innovation. Those are my sort of key areas of interest at the moment, but I find they're always changing because there's always something new coming along and that it's a great opportunity in terms of being able to kind of evolve your areas of interest as you go through. When it comes to challenges, I guess, Perhaps I feel I've been quite lucky because I feel like I've been well supported through my career and I've, I've had the opportunity to work on all sorts of projects at different scales, so everything from strategy and policy development through to major schemes as well as local improvements and so on. And, and of course at a project level they've all brought their own challenges but to me that's part of the day job, it's part of what makes these different things interesting in terms of actually solving those problems and, and figuring out what the best answers actually look like. So, so maybe actually the, the biggest challenge that I've seen in terms of my own career path so far has possibly been a more of a personal one and it's been the, the piece around figuring out how to juggle a busy day job and an increasingly busy day job, an increasingly responsible day job with the fact that I have three young children. So they're now 13, 11 and 8 and so I've been out on maternity leave and come back into the business three times over the course of my career. Um, throughout most of that, apart from a short sort of time away to do with the actual maternity leave itself, I have worked pretty much full time but flexibly ever since I've actually come back to work um, having had children. So on the one hand, of course it, it hasn't been easy because it does put competing demands on your time and I have the same 24 hours in the day as everybody else but I will be honest and say that actually it, it is doable and I genuinely wouldn't have it any other way it's just a case of figuring out what works for you. It is true there are stereotypes out there around what sort of people will be able to bring through the logic, the mathematical, the numerical skills that we need in engineering. It is true there are stereotypes out there. However, honestly, from my point of view, I think these stereotypes are nonsense for two different reasons, actually. First of all, we all know 
there are loads of girls and young women out there who are great at logic and maths and wider numerical skills and problem solving. I was one of them. And I think that we should be really proud of these skills. We shouldn't hide them. We should actually bring those through and, and, and use them as the basis to build careers. But secondly, civil engineering is not just about maths. It is not just about physics. It is not just about numerical skills. We need many more people than the ones who can simply calculate numbers. We need people who can think. We need people who can cut through complexity to ask the right questions and actually find sensible answers to those questions. And above all, we need people who can stop and stand back from the issue and think, so what? And really think about what is it they're trying to plan, to design, to build or improve, and, and why? And actually, have we managed to achieve that with the kind of ideas and solutions that are being designed and brought through in practice and built? So we need all these different types of people. We also need people who are fantastic communicators, because frankly, it is no good being able to do just the numbers and not then being able to explain what those numbers actually mean. So there are so many career paths out there within civil engineering. Some of them, of course, do need very, very strong numerical skills. And that's fantastic. If that is your strength, absolutely, let, let's do that. But actually, if you're somebody who has, you know, a, a pretty competent level of, of math skills, actually, you can play to your strengths in other areas as well. And sometimes it's that mix of skills that makes your potential in terms of coming into an industry like this so interesting. Wow, that's just a fascinating question because the answer is all of them. And honestly, this is a really important point. There are no roles that I see in civil engineering that could not be filled by anybody, women or men. And, and the whole point of civil engineering, of course, is to improve the quality of life for people and communities all across the world. And we have a fantastic track record in doing this over the last 200 years, particularly since the Industrial Revolution. But of course, that's where it gets really interesting, because very often the people who have done all of that civil engineering until now have been men. And that means that the nature of our places, our cities, our communities, they've been physically shaped by men's hands and ideas more than women's. So we've actually been missing half of the potential engineers out there in terms of bringing ideas, insight and new ways of doing things through into that physical form. And of course, that has an impact because it also creates inequality over time unintentionally because we haven't thought about all these different solutions from a truly diverse set of points of view. So in fact, it's not just about what roles can women do, it's about what roles should women do. And the answer is we should absolutely aim to have a civil engineering community that reflects the communities, the reality of the world that is actually out there. I guess, first of all, starting from the day job itself, from your actual professional employment, the first thing, rather obviously, is that you need to make sure you're good at what you do. And that doesn't mean you have to be good at absolutely every aspect of civil engineering. It means you need to find your strengths and you need to really focus on building those and building skills around those and finding ways to do more of the things, of course, that you are good at. It means listening. It means working hard. It means working well as part of a team. It doesn't mean taking your own work off and doing something separately and then wondering why it is that nobody else's work is fitting in with yours. It means learning. It is looking for ways to, to widen your learning every day, all of the time. One of the reasons I, I love working in engineering is that you never stop learning because actually the, the technology, the world around you keeps on changing. So what we need to do keeps on changing as well. I think also get qualified as early as you possibly can with the best possible qualifications you can find out there and, and simply pay attention. Look around you, think of ways that you can do more than just the task or the couple of tasks that you've been given. Find ways not just to do them well, but just to build a little extra into them so that actually you begin to be seen as a really valuable member of that team. But then beyond that, outside your actual sort of employer's organisation, there are so many other things you can do to help yourself and to stand out. One of the really obvious ones that actually everybody can do, although it is really difficult to start with, and believe me, it's difficult for everybody, is to build your network. So obviously you have a network of people, co-workers and colleagues within your organisation, but you will find that you're working with others all around the industry and there are all sorts of professional networks you can get involved with. 
So if you pick one or two of those where you, you find them, you feel that you have an interest, you have a connection to what they do, you'd like to learn more, you get to like, you, you'd like to get to know some of their people. That is a really, really powerful way to, to build your influence and to build your visibility out there in the market more generally. As you get to know more people, as they get to know you, as you do things which help them, as you offer them thoughts and insight that they couldn't see themselves, people will see you as being valuable. And over time, that network in its own right becomes a source of knowledge and inspiration and, and I guess new energy really that otherwise you might not have seen, you might not have been able to tap into. So if, having listened to all of us talk, you're interested in making the world a better place, in improving the lives of millions of people all over the world, you absolutely should consider a career in civil engineering. Looking ahead from my point of view, we're also going to have to play a hugely exciting role in terms of climate action. If we're going to protect that quality of life and defend it for the future and continue to improve society as we go on through the long run, because actually without that climate action, our existence on the planet for the long run is in threat. I genuinely cannot think of a more exciting time to be a civil engineer than right now. The tricky bit though is that civil engineering is so wide ranging. There are very many roles out there, there are all sorts of different opportunities across many different sectors and of course that means that there are many different ways in and there are many many different paths to come through civil engineering. There isn't a sort of a fixed way that you have to do it. So my advice would be to find someone to talk to who already works in civil engineering, perhaps also to look online, find out a bit more about what a career in civil engineering really looks like. If you are roughly 15 or 16, you might want to start thinking about whether you can line up some work experience, perhaps in person or even online. There are virtual work experience programs now running, offered by some companies, including mine, that will help to show you the range of opportunities that exist out there and help you to make some decisions. But whatever you end up doing, and it doesn't matter whether this is to do with civil engineering or anything else, to me, the most important thing, my most important piece of advice to each of you is to follow what you love doing. Follow your own strengths, make your own decisions, because ultimately, this is your life, this is your career. So please make sure you make the most of it.